Good morning, everybody. Hey, wow, we got a good old group in here this morning. So nice to see you guys. It's April 2nd, 2024. We made it through April Fool's Day, and it looks like all y'all are getting a lot of rain all around the country. Good for you guys. Soggy, no, not me. None today for uh, South Texas. High of 80. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. It's great to see you all in here. Mm. I got my coffee over full. You know, it was one of those moments where it, it's coming out of the Keurig and you're standing there and you're like, is it going to make it? Oh, and I've got another cup ready to kind of slip in. <laughs> you guys are having tornado warnings in the bathroom and you're watching me. Now that's dedication, Bobby. You're awesome. Well, prayers for safety, my friend. Here's Frito. Let me pick my camera. Where's she at? Come here, Frito. Come here, baby. Come here. Good girl. Good morning. Oh, hi, sweet girl. She's always so shy. That's my girl. Yeah. She hears me talking and she says, oh, if I go in there, I might get my ears rubbed. Yeah. So uh, I had, oh, I've got my, my chungle sticking up here. <laughs> so, hey, hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread and you are in our stitchuation room. This is a Monday through Friday virtual stitching retreat where we come in here and we're all lovers of stitching and we just kind of hang out together. Um, Teresa Harley has gone over the rainbow bridge. She was riddled with arthritis and, uh, the vet was, um, he, he validated our concerns and said it was time. So thank you for asking anyway. Uh, all right. <laughs> I look like I got an antenna. <laughs> then it itches where I pulled it. So um, I finished the chicken yesterday. Whoop. Ta-da. She's done. So now that all of her parts and pieces are together, I don't have to worry about um, her running off anymore. So that's finished. And today I thought I'd take you through my scanning process on Snaplique just because I can. Oh, thank you, Kay. It's been a, uh, let me see, it was the 15th of March. So it's been a couple of weeks. And that pattern is from chickens from Connecting Threads. And I'm having a lot of fun making it. Pretty, pretty easy. Um, I've got, uh, there's three different sizes in here. And they say it's a fat quarter quilt. So I pulled out the peachy keen bundle from Corey Yoder and the link to the pattern is below. So I'm doing eight, eight birds with feet and eight birds on a nest for those who are new. And if you are new, let us know in the chat. We have a welcoming committee and they will make you feel right at home. So I had an interesting thing happen last weekend. I was uh, down at the coast and we have, um, I have a scan and cut down there. And it's the SDX 225. So it's a fairly recent model. And I was, I was trying to scan in some pattern pieces for Happy Halloween. And I scanned them in just fine. Everything looked good. And I went to save them to the cloud and it said, you're not connected. Uh, oh, Pat, hi, you're new to this video. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. If you are new and I just missed it, I apologize. Whoop, sorry about that. You guys go by, I go to click off and it, phew. But um, Scotty Dog, oh my goodness, we've got a virtual kitchen and she says that we there are goodies in there. You guys wander over. Okay, everything is fat and calorie free. So we always have a kitchen at a stitching retreat and that's a lot of fun. Scotty Dog kind of manages the kitchen and somebody is on the coffee pot. So that's good. So I, I scanned everything in to the scan and cut. And I went to save it to the cloud because it's always been connected to the cloud. And it came back and it said, you're not connected to the internet. Can't, 
you know, fail. And I was like, fail? What is that about? It was annoying. Oh, Dave, you want to see Keith's sewing room? If you're here tomorrow, I'll set that up, okay? I don't have it set up today, but we can do it tomorrow. So you won't believe what he's got in there. Good grief. <laughs> it's impossible to move around. <laughs> so thank you. Allison just made a fresh pot. That's great. Thank you. So anyway, it said it couldn't connect to the internet. Now, we the internet we have down there is um it's local out of uh I think it's out of Victoria, Texas. TSID or something to that effect. Can't get spectrum, but that's for another reason. I'm working on that. But so it kept telling me it can't. Now I go into the wizard to connect the internet, you know, to connect the scan and cut to the internet. And the wizard, it says, okay, so I've got, I've got two networks down there. I've got the, the regular, we call it Thompson. And then I have another network and I've got a repeater in the house and a repeater. I want to show you guys, looks like one of these. This, this looks like a little robot, but this is from Netgear. See this, this, this works. Okay. So what it, what this does is it takes your internet signal. If your if your internet signal is weaker, like on one end of your house, you can get one of these gizmos. They're not very expensive. This will wirelessly connect. It has a port to connect hardwire. We're going to talk about tech. Okay. So it has a, a port to connect hardwire in there. But all you do is you just turn the, plug it into the wall. It, it just fits into a socket. And then you just hit the button. It turns on and it takes about, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds. And all the little lights turn blinky green and everything's good. So what it does, it's a booster. Yeah. You can use a nest. Yeah. Booster, repeater. They kind of, they call the same thing. So it takes the signal from the the router you know where your internet comes into your house and it grabs a hold of it and it allows something farther away from it to use that okay and these are great if you've got weak internet in one part of your house get one of these gizmos and get net gear don't get the cheap junk okay made in china i'm sure this is made in china too but this is us approved for use in military bases i trust netgear they're a U.S. They comply with USA, whatever standards. Okay. Yeah. If you've got metal in your house that interrupts. Yes, Sally, same thing. So these are great. I think I paid 40 bucks, $45. They're not that much, but so let's talk about something more techie. I know you guys are going, don't, don't let your eyes roll in the back of your head. All right. I did a talk about this or a blog post. I can't remember what, or a video or something. So there's two different bandwidths in your house. There's, there's no, there's two different bandwidths. There's five gigahertz and 2.5 gigahertz. And the 2.5 gigahertz is really big, like an elephant, but it's really slow, like an elephant. The five gigahertz is smaller but it's fast, like a cheetah. So I hope that makes sense. So anyway, more coffee for tech info. Yes. So there is this thing in the tech world called IOT, and that is the Internet of Things. All right. And IOT devices, Internet of Things, that could be your robot vacuum, your scan and cut, your luminaire, whatever. Okay. And these IOT, IOT things. Yeah. We're power tools. That's right. We love tech. <laughs> so the IOT things, they're all the time, you know, your ring doorbell, your Alexa, your blink, all of that stuff is all IOT. It's not really a computer, but it's connected into the internet and doing its thing, right? Well, a lot of IoT things don't use the five gigahertz, the cheetah. It likes, yes, and your Bernina 
likes the 2.5. Your scan and cuts like the 2.5. A lot of stuff is only configured to work on that larger, slower bandwidth. Okay. So sometimes you'll get an internet and Spectrum is famous for this. You'll get an internet service provider that their router where the internet comes into your house only allows you to use the 5.0 gigahertz thinking, oh, well, everybody in the house is using up to speed, newest, latest and greatest stuff. When in fact, we, we poor folks down in the sewing room really need the 2.5 gigahertz. So that's kind of what was going on for some reason, they must have done an update on the router down at the coast because it used to work. I'm trying to connect to my five gigahertz. I can see it on the wizard. You know, when you go in, you use it. I've got my scan cut right here, rolling around with me. So you go in and you go to your wizard and it sees it. You know, I see the one that's the big one that is the big router and it's like I can't connect to it. And I'm thinking, hmm, what's up with that? Well, I can also see this one. And it says whatever it is, 2.5 GZ. And I'm like, all right, so this sees both. This sees the five and this sees this also allows a 2.5. The 2.5 is there from your router, it's just that the internet service provider, the company that paid that you have connected with your internet won't let you use it or any of your stuff. It's not convenient for them to maintain or whatever. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> it can be hard to connect to the 2.5, yes. No, okay, you don't call Spectrum. They'll tell you you already have it, you don't need it. <laughs> so if you if you're have it, especially if you have Spectrum, what you need to do is get you one of these because this you plug it into your wall and this my scan and cut sees this so all i have to do is connect to that and that's it spectrum will not spectrum has hidden the 2.5 gigahertz it's there they won't let you connect to it and then once you connect to it it'll shut off and you won't be able to connect to it again they're a real pain about that i've had that conversation with many people and when it first started, I started getting emails. Um, well, I want Spectrum down at the coast, Paula, because it's got fiber. That would be great. So look, but I want to show you. So I've got these things around my house too. Okay, here. Uh, no, I want to cancel that. Previous memory. Let me see. Um, my settings. Let me get down here. Go back up. Machine. Oh, here. One more. N network. So if I go to setup wizard. There. There it is. Let me show y'all. Hold on. I'm going to move my little camera. Can you. Let me see how far I can pull this. See that? There's Thompson. And there's an extender, that 2G, 2G extender. There's that. See? There's my neighbors. Okay. So I've got an extender in here and then this one. That's also an extender. So that's what we call access points. So anyway, when that had first happened, when I first started getting emails to people saying, I got a scan and cut and I can't get it to connect to the internet and it's driving me crazy. And I called a guy who used to be, he retired now, but he used to be in charge of the network shop at the Air Force Personnel Center, right? And I'm like, what is going on and why can't these people connect these machines into their internet? And he said, oh, it's probably... Okay, so you have Spectrum in Nebraska and you can connect to both. Good, Katie. That's good. Yeah, see, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. And sometimes you just don't know. And so, like, I was trying to connect to my five gigahertz at the coast and I couldn't. But then I, I saw the two, the repeater, the extender, booster, whatever you want to call it. So I tried connecting to that. 
just like that, connected just fine, saved everything to the cloud just fine. So if you're having trouble, okay, if you're having trouble connecting your Internet of Things, you'll sound very smart. It's IoT, Internet of Things, right? If you're having trouble connecting these things, your sewing machines, your scanning cuts, whatever, get yourself a repeater. And it doesn't matter what room it's in. You know, you're not really using it to repeat your signal all throughout your house. You're just using it to allow connectivity to the 2.5 large, slower bandwidth, large, slower bandwidth. And um, it works fine. Your, your scan and cut and your sewing machines, they don't need that five gigahertz. They came up with that. Originally, the internet was just on that 2.5 but it wasn't fast enough for gamers who were streaming, streaming movies, streaming all this other stuff. Also, that reminds me, I fit, sure, all of that. Yeah, your Frida says, my hubby wants all the fast stuff. Your machine wants 2.5. So just give that a try. Um, give that a, okay, look at this. Betsy's got the same problem. Machines in the same room with the router. So connectivity is not a problem. Distance is not a problem. Okay. You mostly go through your phone hotspot, but your phone hotspot is actually using cellular data. That's a whole different dog, whole different animal, not the elephant, not the, not the cheetah. It's a whole different animal is cellular data. Yeah. And that, that drops when cellular data decides to do whatever it does. You know, there's a solar flare or something and pfft, there goes your cellular data. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so a lot of you were asking me, um, cause I was complaining about internet, you know, down here, sometimes I get the spinning dark, whatever. And you talked about, we'll get Starlink because you, you're, you live in the boons or, uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody, you know, lives in the boonies. And they got Starlink and it's great. It's inexpensive and they love it. So the, I can't get Starlink. No, I, no, I can get Starlink. Starlink won't work for me because Starlink. So have y'all ever had somebody connect your internet and they'll do a test, a speed test before they leave. And you'll see the needle go up and it'll go fast and it'll come back down and then it'll go, what's your, so you're getting your upload speed and your download speed. Okay. When you're streaming games and movies and all that stuff, your Netflix and all that, that is, um, see Doris had to get a booster. Yeah. Okay. So my gosh, you guys are all into that. So Dave, he just ran a Starlink speed test and it's 162 megabits per second. That's really good that the download or the upload see, but if you, my, I use upload to stream out to you guys and their upload speed lags for what I need. You're confused. Your machine wants 2.5 or five. So some, it, it just depends. So most of our machines run on the 2.5 gigahertz. Most of them do. Okay. You can't buy it one way or the other, and you don't know what you're getting when you get it. But what you need is the ability to connect to that 2.5 network from your router. And some internet service providers won't let you do that like Spectrum. They won't let you do that. So you just buy a boost. Look at that. You have about a 500 upload, Franny. Wow. I wish I don't have fiber out here. Okay. So I don't even know. I don't even know what my stuff is out here. Um, you can go to speedtest.net and see what you got. So I'll show you, I'll share my screen with you guys and show you. So my router here at my house from my internet service provider allows me to connect to that. I would love to get fiber. They, your whole house is IOT. And yeah, 
just about, I'm sure. Let's see. Let me share this. Okay. So this is speed test at my house. Let's see. It's going to connect. And you can see how it works. See that? So this is my download speed is only like 106, 107, which is meh. It's okay. Now it's doing the upload test. See how that is piss poor. That's <laughs> what that is. <laughs> it's piss poor. <laughs> So, um, you know, and I have, it's, it's just, that's just the way it is. You guys, that is it. So yeah. Smart light bulbs. They're a pain to connect to. Yeah. Is it 2.5 or 2.4? I can't remember. Right. So that's the thing. Washing machines, all of the stuff that connect on the internet, all of this smart stuff. They say you got a smart fridge and smart this and that you guys, if your router does not allow the connectivity to that that slower, bigger bandwidth of the of the the internet, you're gonna have trouble. 2.4. Thank you, Paula. Appreciate that. So yeah, I have a 60-foot tower up off the top of my house. And that does what's called frequency hopping internet. So it connects to a tower in a field of cows somewhere heading down toward Cuero, Texas. <laughs> uh, Mary Jo, I'll be in Colorado um, next year, July of 25. So um, <laughs> you guys are not happy with your internet service provider. Yep. So anyway, that's just, um, that, that's just the way that's, so again, if you've got a, if you have a, a scan and cut or your sewing machine and you're trying to connect it to your internet and it won't go get yourself a net gear repeater. Okay. Or a booster or whatever you want to call it, plug it into the wall. It will self-connect into your network. Everything will be fine. And then, uh, you can connect to this once it's up and running. They're really, it's like plugging in a toaster y'all. You just take these little plugs and pop it into the wall. And then after a while, these little lights on the side will turn green. So. No, Bernadette, I'm not going to Northern Michigan. No way. Well, not this time of year. Good goodness. It's too, um, What's a good upload speed? I don't, you know, Lynn, if you're, well, over uh, 125 would be fabulous. <laughs> but um, Dave, this is an old one. Let me see. I don't know. Get a new one. We've got a link rate status, extender status, PC to extender connection status, and WPS. So I don't know. It doesn't have a model number. It just says Netgear on it, but it's got all these little lights that connect and let you see what all's going on. Yeah, no, Linda, your your internet's screaming fast. In the warmer months. Yeah, I'll go in the warmer months. I'm going up to um I'm going to Bernie, Texas on the 11th to talk to their, um, their guild up there. Y'all, did you see my brain? It just went blink. Well, I'm sitting here thinking, was that my IP address on that <laughs> speed net? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. What does IOT mean? Internet of things. And that's what all this stuff is. It's all, they're not really computers per se that have a, you know, it's not like a tablet or a laptop, okay, where they've got um, uh, network interface cards in them, where, uh, what we call, so they're, they're not, it's not a computer. It's not a computer, but it's a thing that connects to the internet for file transfers or whatever, 
or it connects to the internet to turn on your thermostat or your washer and dryer or your oven or your robot vacuum. You know what I mean? It's, it's sole purpose in life. Um, those things are collectively called the internet of things or IOT. So yeah, we all have lots of things, don't we? Yeah. That's what that all is. <clears throat> So I don't have the model. No, it doesn't have a model number on it of the Netgear. Just get one. They're all the same. This is an older one anyway. So Betty Boop can't remember the name of that quilt. Oh, okay. What was it? Which one, Lisa, that I mentioned yesterday morning? The orange one? That's home again. Mm-hmm. Carol, what kind of talks do I give to guilds? So I'll be taking my scan and cut up there tomorrow or tomorrow, next week. And it's a down and dirty, um, how to cut fabric with your scan and cut. And then Patty, there are some very bright people in here. There you go. Devices that connect to a net network that are not network equipment. That's very good. Any appliance that you control with your phone or remote control. Thank you, Patty. Yeah. So, but like, I don't, I don't control the scan and cut with my phone or the remote control, but they all, they all talk to, you know, things, it connects up to the internet. Right. So the orange one. Okay, Betty. Yeah. That's uh home again. That was a free spirit wants to know if the grid goes down, how do all these smart things work? They don't. <laughs> it's, I'll show you how they work. Um, where'd it go? I had one. They work with a USB. That's how they work. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if your internet's not working, you're, you're back to USB. Uh, Judy, go to this, that webpage and speedtest.net. That's how you find out. So if your internet's really lagging, go to speedtest. Dot net, it'll give you the download speed and the upload speed. Upload speed is not a big deal for most of you. It is for me because I'm streaming out to you. And that's what upload is all about. But um, your download speed is what really matters for those of you that are streaming Netflix and you're watching all your stuff and all of that. So if the internet goes down and the cloud does not work, let's see. That is why you don't save primarily to the cloud. You don't want to lose access to your data. So, so Patty, I, I use the cloud just for backup. I don't use it as a, as a document resource for me to reach to and grab it and keep it. I just do a backup to the cloud, but I mostly save everything locally. So yeah, you need to make sure your machines use USB. That's right, Polly. You never know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, but anyway, so when I go to the guild this coming or next week, I'll be talking about using the scan and cut to create, um, you know, to cut out fabric. And then I'll probably give a little demo on how it can make, um, how it can make applique out of a non applique pattern. So any cruises scheduled for 2025? Yes. Yeah, there's one May 4th through the 11th out of Galveston. I don't, it's on Royal, I think, but I don't know where. It's not even on their website yet. So we did a save the date for that. So, <clears throat> yep. It's it's almost like using a USB. <laughs> was going back to pioneer days like our grandmas. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Yes. So Gloria, the, the quilt, the Halloween quilt starts May 8th and the videos will come out in the morning about 8 AM. And then they're on, they're pre-recorded, so you can watch them whenever you want and you can watch them as many times as you want. Your brain shut down, Vicki. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's early. It's early. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then you can, and we're going to start with the ghost and then through each one of the pictures uh, in order on the, on the quilt. 
I save my patterns in my computer. Okay. I only use the USB for transport. You guys, these things are not designed for long-term storage. These are for transport and that's it. Okay. They're, they're too delicate. If you drop it, you can mess up the components in it and you won't be able to get it. So, um, look at that. <laughs> Alexa listens. Yes, she does. Yep. Yeah, I I don't have one of those. I don't have one of those. So um anyway. Are you go oh Sally's going to Staples tomorrow to have her happy Halloween copies made? That's great. Yeah. Anyway, um so I was just gonna kind of go through what I'm what I'm just doing. I've got to scan in a pattern. Um, for my next block that I'm working on, let me go to home network. Okay. I need my scanning mat here. Yesterday I cut out all of the, uh, pieces for the witch. That was cool. So those, oh, there are 24. There were 25. I think there's 24 more kits for the fabric out on uh, Two Chicks Quilting. I've got a link to it below the video. So what's next? So if you guys want a fabric kit, she put 25 of them out there yesterday. And somebody sent me an email and said that, um, that, she got one that day. So um, that means there's 24 left that I'm aware of. Do you bring all your sewing stuff on the cruise? You can bring anything you want except an iron. They will confiscate it. So don't do that. All right. Next is the skeleton. All right. So I need to get my skeleton ready to scan. So yeah, the Halloween pattern right here. There it is right there. And if you don't like that one, there's a Merry Christmas. What did I do with that? The cover page of that. Here it is. This finishes at 56 by six. Let's see. 56 and a half by 66 and a half. Okay. So I've already shot the videos and got everything ready for all four of these blocks. And now I'm going to start on this guy. So this is the way I'm working across the quilt. Okay. So now I'm going to work on this guy. I'm getting all these videos ready for you guys while I'm on the cruise in May. And if you don't, if you're not into Halloween, you can do the Merry Christmas. Okay. This is cute. She's got a little angel. Isn't that adorable? Now, um, Gloria, you're going to need Stitch Artist 2 or 3. I recommend 3. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Let's see. If you don't have simple shapes, do you need to downsize downsize the shapes before you cut them out. I don't understand. I don't understand. Do you mean download or down, make them smaller? If you don't have the shapes. <clears throat> how do I, oh, how do you take, you can take your, not a dumb question at all. Not a dumb question at all. You can either, well, the idea is for them to print it, right? And so you can send them an email, give them a call and get their email address and just send the digital file to them that you downloaded to your computer, attach it to an email and send it to them and they'll print it out. Yes, there are going to be kits for Merry Christmas. I, I talked to them yesterday. So there will be kits for Merry Christmas for you guys. Okay. So <clears throat> I got my fabric, some of it last week, not all of it. A few more pieces are on the way right now. <clears throat> so pardon you guys, the oak down here is horrendous, horrendous. So I will show you what I've done to kind of keep track of all of this. I have a little three ring binder and it is chock full right now. My goodness. So here is what I did was I took the main pattern, Pete, the big one. This is the cover. I had them print this. My, I took mine to the UPS store. So I had them print this in a glossy, on glossy paper color. All right. 
And then same goes for Merry Christmas, glossy paper color. Everything else I had them print in black and white. Most of these instructions right here for us using Snapplique method, we're not gonna use these. So I'll just get rid of those. Then I put a little divider in there. These are old dividers that I had written on for stuff. And here are all of my pattern pieces. So those are in one section. And then I have another divider. And here are all of my placement guides. Okay. And then I have another divider in here. And there is all of Merry Christmas getting ready for that one. So. Oh, a moose would be cute in Minky. Yeah. You don't want to cut that on your scan and cut. Ooh, no. Okay. So the skeleton. Man, talk about needing that uh, placement diagram to get those bones right. Oh, my word. That's crazy. <laughs> but this is how you got to keep everything straight, y'all. You know? So. And if you're doing the witch, if you're jumping ahead and doing the witch, her shirt and her, her bat are on page 32. Okay? Okay. And when you scan it, you got to do inside, outside, not outside only, like most of them. You know, most of y'all for a class in Northern Michigan, send me an invite. Yep. We will be on the road in 2025. So in July of 2025, we're going to Colorado. I'm going to speak at a guild in Denver area. And then from there, I want to... Um, jump across over to Missouri star. Cause I've never been there. And then from there I'm going down to Branson. So that's getting all set up. Uh, so once I get, you know, so there is, um, there is time in like either before I go to Colorado that I could do, you know, if you get a guild, Reach out to, have them reach out to me. So, do I load the jump drive and take it to be printed? You can, but you don't have to, Wanda. You can email the pattern to them. I emailed my pattern to my UPS store. Am I coming to Pennsylvania? I don't have that on the schedule at all right now, Carol. My schedule is building out right now through September of 25. <laughs> Dave, I, I love it. I'm going to tell my husband. Okay, Dave. I've got a, I've got one right here I could pop down. Hold on. How's this? See, it didn't do anything. He, he installed that. He installed that. I got a, I could point those toward me. I'm going to show you up here. He installed that one up there. I've got another light at me. It's just the way it is, Dave. I've got lights everywhere. Goodness. <laughs> yeah, Missouri Star right now, I'm um, I'm planning on, well, the thing in Branson is going to be an RV sew together. So I think that that is how that works. Um, I, it would be great to uh, put together something in Missouri, in Missouri, at Missouri Star. That would be fun. So you're an IT consultant and you implement massive multi-million cloud-based business. Cloud is not just for back. I agree, Wendy. No, no, no. It's not just for back. No, that's what I use mine for. Cloud is not just for backup. No, 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 no. You are absolutely right. No, I, I fully understand what all that's about. I use mine for backup. Okay. I don't, I don't have a need for a cloud-based system <laughs> at that point. <laughs> okay. Um, so my skeleton, yeah, right before I retired from the air force, I was a cybersecurity analyst for the air force. And right before I retired, we moved all of our personnel data to AWS fully get what cloud is completely. It's a good thing. You know, it's a good thing. So <clears throat> So if one fails, you've got redundancy and another one can pick up. I get it. I completely get it. Power tools with thread headquarters is a well-oiled machine. <laughs> Free spirit. <laughs> that depends on what day it is. 
Oh my goodness. I got to find my, um, the only thing I wish I had that I don't on this pattern is a table of contents. Maybe I need to print that up. I need to put that together because I'm forever flipping through all of these pages looking for my, um, yeah, with redundancy is key. You betcha. One goes down, another one picks it up. Got to love that. Yeah. We do redundancy on my channel here all the time. I, I feel like I say the same thing 400 times. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and email the, the, the pattern. If you, It cost me like $10. Oh, here we go. I found it. Skeleton is page 53 and 54. Now, y'all, if you're doing the ghost, see like this right here? See how there's no enclosure that's not closed off you need to enclose that to scan it oh wait a minute this is the design page let me check the other pages if like the ghost on the pattern pieces it's not closed off you ordered the fabric kit good annie good for you that's awesome cute fabrics too i'm loving them let me show you guys what i do with the bucket What they were waiting on to get a bucket for all your fabrics. Okay. So, and each fabric has a sticker on it. This is very organized. Okay. So each fabric is organized. It has a number on it. There's 22. There's 20. Put it right, put it back where it goes. Okay. And then each, you're going to get a key. And each, the key has each fabric labeled and it tells you what it's for. Look at all that. How cool is that? How nice? Yeah. Oh, they only have seven kits. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So that way you can keep track of what's what. And I, as my stickers decide to come off, I'll go ahead and probably staple them to the fabric. That way they, you know, on a, on a corner or something like that. And I can kind of find them, but these are neat. So what they were waiting on so much of was this fabric right here, which is our, which is going to be our, um, our borders. They needed to get the color of the purple so that they could match the background fabrics. So i got a big bundle of different colors of background fabrics here. So they had to get all of that together, right? And I don't I don't have my fabric for the witch's hair. I went ahead and grabbed a blue and just did it. So I think it works fine. So I cut out a little witch yesterday. Fun, fun. I got to cut out the rest of them and get it going. Let me check out my skeleton pieces here. Yeah. You could use hanging file folders to sort out the fabrics and not have to staple. I could. Where'd I get the bucket? Um, Walmart.com. Yeah. Where are the kits? There's a link below, Sarah in the description box and that's where you get the kit. I'd appreciate it if you'd use my links. I got to find my pieces. Well, now I'm flipping through. No, I only pulled the placement diagram. Some of these are easy. What are you going to use the background for? Happy Halloween. Yeah, the background fabric is for each block. That's the pumpkin. No, you didn't miss anything. Allison, you're good. Vampire, goodness sakes. Here we go. Oh, my word. <laughs> yeah, you definitely need the layout diagram for this guy. How about that? How did she get that all on one page? That's amazing. 
looks good. So when you do your skull, ah, even though they have these in here, that's just a placement line because here they are right here. So you you still only need to do outside only. And these numbers, that's the, I don't know if that's what goes down first. I had, yeah, the eyes go down first. So those are, the numbers on the pattern are stitch order. They'll, it'll come. They've got to get them. They have, y'all, they sold 200 kits. So they, don't worry. They'll come. It'll be fine. You'll get it. Yeah. Thumbs up y'all, please. What are y'all talking? Some serious, that's some serious nerd stuff. Raid. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Raid. I'm trying to remember. Um, Raid. Rapid. A redundant. I'm trying to remember what all that meant. Y'all, it's been, it's been years. It's been years. Mm. 10% off, Beth. If you use my link for Embrilliance, there is a 10% off code, not 20, my friend. You'll get everybody all excited. I had to straighten that out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I froze. Yeah. Okay. So, the way I'm doing this. So you, the top of his head doesn't have anything and the bottom of his chin. So I'm just going to line these up and tape them together. This is my save to USB design. So I kind of hold them up to the light and just get them even. Yeah. Dave, you can come down here and install all the lighting you want. <clears throat> I know. I always feel like I need more lighting. Oh, you get 10% from me. Okay. So you can, if you sign up for a brilliance newsletter, you get 10% off and then you can use another 10% coupon. That's cool. If you can do that, that's cool. Re redundant array of independent discs. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's a big storage system. We used to have a storage guy. He just passed. Yeah, Betty Boop was telling me about it. Betty's a, Betty Boop's a Unix nerd. <laughs> <laughs> she hides it. <laughs> All right. Let me load this mat. You know, I had a lady write me the other day and um, she said she was a New York City police detective before she retired. 20 some years or 30 years, whatever, as New York's NYPD police detective. I, I uh, am in awe of the people who tune, tune in here. She said, when you talked about, you know, matching colors and patterns makes you freeze. Uh, she said, I totally get it. Cause I'm like you, I'm very analytical and, and the way she thinks it. I, that's, that's just an honor that people that, you know, they, they're like, Oh yeah, I get it. You know, and they're, they're so bright. Is the Christmas one going after Halloween or during Sandy? I'm going to do Merry Christmas in August. Okay, but what I'm going to do with Merry Christmas is I'm going to say refer back, you know, to these other videos. It's not going to be as in depth. So I need to go to scan and I'm going to scan to USB and start because that um, those are those are big. Those are big projects. You didn't get the nerd gene. Ah. Crafty Pat's nerdless. You got me. <laughs> I was a um, policy wonk. That was my job. I'm a red tape policy wonk person. So, yeah, I'm not. 
I wasn't in tech. I was cybersecurity. I had to know all the rules. That was my. We're all type A personalities. Yeah, you're retired ICU ER nurse CK. We've got a lot of bright, bright people that come in here. All right. That's saved. That's good. Okay, I'm going to take this out. I'm working on the skeleton today to make a video for you guys. That's what I'm doing here. All right. But what I have to do first is um, practice getting all the pieces put together. I'm going to tell it okay. Now I'm going to scan to cut data and start. So you're a project manager, Patsy. Good. Look, we got lots of, yeah, there's a lot. And I love a lot of us. We were in very demanding, you know, um, high stress jobs. And now we're like, I just want to sit. What's a policy wonk? <laughs> Heidi. Um, that's a, that's a term in the military. <laughs> uh, we, a wonk is a type of, I guess what you do for your job, you know, whatever, but policy wonk, uh, that's it. So my job was to know policy. So I would be sitting in a room full of incredibly brilliant people that want to do something with computer programs on the government network. And they would say, I want to do this and I want to do that. And we want it to do this and blah, blah, blah. And I would say, okay, okay. Oh, nope. Can't do that. It's going to have to be done this way. So my job was to know the rules of the federal government's requirements for network computer stuff. So, all right. So this is all scanned here. I'm going to tell it outside only. And okay, I can't pull this over any further because of a cord. I'm, I'm limited on my cord. Save it to the cloud. There we go. See, my router allows connectivity for the 2.5. How about that? Oh, you do, Deb? Deb runs the POS system for the Army, MWR. My goodness, that's a lot. Boy, what a... Golf courses, swimming pools, and movie stars. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, you know what? So somebody wrote me. Um, That's funny. So somebody wrote me yesterday and said, there are other companies that have used the term snap and I may not be able to trademark it. Um, so that's one of the things I'm working with my attorney on. So like there's a place that is selling pre-cut laser pieces. They call them snap -liques. That's a thing. Okay. There's another out on eBay. It says snap -liques. You can buy a whole bunch of them. These are, they look like freestanding lace, but they have little snaps on the back that you can literally snap them to whatever. They call them snap -liques. Those are things. And what I'm trying to do is put the trademark on a process for teaching. So that's different. So we'll see if he can split that hair. So, yep. Look at this. Hey, Jan Jan. <laughs> you're a policy wonk for you as fish and wildlife. <laughs> That's awesome. That's fantastic. I think that's neat that we have got some very, very, uh, yeah, like Delta faucets and Delta Airlines, same name, different product and process. Absolutely. That's that's great, Dave. Yeah, that's exactly right. But that's my attorney's job to figure that out and figure out those, you know, because I went to USPTO yesterday and looked, which is the, the trademark government's thing. Did a search for snap -like and there's nothing. There's nothing pending. Nobody's got a trademark on that at all right now. So um, doing the homework, just doing the homework. Yeah, that's all. Do I need to do it? No. That's probably $1,500 I don't need to spend. But it's got to be, you know, but if I'm going to teach it and my method, no, I don't know if I need to do that, but what the heck. Anyway, we're almost done here. Okay, save successful. Tell it okay. And I'm done. Um, let me eject this. Okay. 
Now I got to put my pages back in my binder. I'm famous for uh, leaving this stuff laying out. So, or leaving it in, you know, I, I go into my mats down here and there's pages sticking around in there. All righty. I haven't missed anything. You were, you were an insurance broker specializing in employee benefits for large companies. Oh, that's great. Wow. Very neat. Very neat. Very neat stuff, you guys. I respect all of y'all so much. That is so cool. And, you know, I love it that you, you never, I think it's 15. I think that's what I got charged when I trademarked um, Power Tools with Thread, if I remember correctly. So, oh my goodness. I just, um, I think it's really neat that there's a lot of us that uh, were, you know, we were running hard and fast in the professional world. And when it came time to retirement, you're like, I just want to sit down and play with my toys and my fabric. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh my word, D. God's work. <laughs> that's crazy. Yes, Katie, that's right. We all bring something different to the party. And that's what I love about this place. When I wear my shirt that says, I'm not the quilt police. I mean that. Yeah. All righty, you guys. You just check. Uh, oh, good. Okay. It looks like everybody's happy here. You are a vice president. What's Marsh in Canada? Neat. All righty. I'm going to go, you guys. I got to, um, amen, I'm playing with thread. You bet. So I'm going to let you guys go for today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already so that we can spend more time together. And uh, <laughs> a short order cook for organisms. <laughs> Isn't it funny the names we give ourselves? <laughs> Yeah. All right, you guys. So I'm going to continue working on this today and I hope you guys have a great day. Please give the video a thumbs up and I will see you tomorrow. You guys go sew something. Bye.